Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Jordan of PictureMonk.com, and welcome to another episode. And this episode of the Picture Monk Podcast, episode 18, is all about questions. On uh, Friday, I believe, or Thursday or Friday this past week, uh, I was up really late last night, and I just put out a, a tweet on my uh, my Twitter account, and then that's at PictureMonk if you want to follow me there. And it has to do with just questions. I said, I, I know it's late, but just uh, if you have any questions, send them my way. And uh, it, it's really weird because I didn't get any on Twitter or Facebook, but I did get some emailed directly to me, which I thought was uh, what I thought was really crazy. I didn't, you know, I, it, I mean, if you want to ask questions, definitely throw them on Twitter and just uh, just tag me in them, and I can uh, I can see them there. But um, yeah, I didn't think I would get questions emailed to me, which I'm, I'm don't don't get me wrong. I really like it. It's kind of cool to to have those come in. But I was kind of shocked about that. So uh, I just put together a, a, a list of questions and I wanted to run through them. And they're actually pretty good questions. Uh, there were a couple that I had to just throw out because they were, uh, you know, they were things that I covered in previous podcasts and I talk about them more often than not. And, and, um, most of them had to do with HDR and I've talked about that, I think a lot, but I did keep one HDR image in here because it doesn't have to do exactly with, uh, with like processing or the, the process of getting an HDR photo, but it's kind of like the thought behind it. So, um, so let's go and get started. Uh, question number one is from a Will Brinsky. I think that's how you name Br- Brisky. And it says, uh, what flash unit would you recommend for a beginner? Um, that's actually a really good question because my, uh, I'm trying to grab my flash here. Um, my flash went out that I had previously. It was a, it was probably like a $30 off brand flash. And, uh, it, it went out because of, ma- of battery corrosion. <laughs> Everything was great on it, except that I just had a whole bunch of batteries, uh, in there and it just corroded the inside and I couldn't couldn't get it to work. So that kind of got me to, uh, go on Amazon and order the flash unit that I've been wanting for a very long time and just now had the excuse to get it. And that's the, uh, young, no, uh, I think, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's a uh, Y O U. Uh, I'm sorry if I spelled my last name. It's Y O N G N U O. Uh, I'm just going to call it young new, um, or young new. how about that? Young new flash. And it's the, uh, YN562 Speedlight. And I've been wanting this one for a while. It's it's uh, not a TTL flash, so, so it's not a through-the-lens metering flash, but it uh, it is a manual flash, and I uh, I actually kind of recommend um, manual flashes. I um, I just, I, I feel it kind of mimics studio lights. So uh, when you have studio lights, you know, you got to control the flash output um, with your shutter speed, your ISO, that sort of thing. So, uh, I, I kind of, I kind of recommend those and I kind of prefer those. So I, I got that and I actually just got it a couple days ago and I just been playing around with taking some sample photos. So it's a, it's a really good flash. Um, it, like I said, it's really easy to use uh, manual flash. It works with the, uh, cowboy studio triggers that I talked about in the last podcast that are just uh, cheap wireless triggers. So, uh, so I'll put a link on that at the show notes. So if you go to picturemonk.com slash PMP018, uh, I believe. Yeah, 018. And, uh, I'll have that, uh, have a link there so you can check that out on Amazon. It's only about 50 bucks, but it's a really good flash. So I plan on actually making a couple of videos about that because it's just a really good, really good flash unit to have. Uh, so thanks, Will, for the, for the, uh, question about that. The next question is from uh, Stacy Thompson. I believe that's your name. Um, it actually said Stacy Thompson, but I just put it in on it because I, I would have figured that would that would be the last name, maybe just cut off or something. Um, but it says uh, it's a, kind of a basic question. Can you recommend a Canon DSLR? Uh, that's a really open-ended question, actually. A, uh, I do only shoot Canon because uh, that's what I've started out with. I don't have anything against Nikon's. Uh, I actually wouldn't mind a, a Nikon to use um, for like a second second body just to play around with. But uh, if if I was going to recommend a DSLR in the Canon brand for a beginner, um, I would probably go for the Rebel series. That's an easy one to go with. Um, they're cheap, uh, cheaper. And, uh, you know, you can probably find a, uh, like a Canon T5i for probably around 850 or so, 850 bucks US. 
Um, and that should come with a standard kit lens. Um, and you can, you can kind of, if you know, if you're a beginner, the kit lens is really all you need. I know a lot of people say to throw it out, but uh, it's really all you need starting out. And then you can decide whether to move up. Um, if you're wanting to go kind of in the full frame market or you want to go in a, a higher end DSLR, um, if you want to, if you definitely want to go in the full frame market, you can probably get a used, uh, Canon 5D Mark II. Uh, those are still really good cameras. Um, a Canon 5D Mark III is a newer one. And, uh, you can probably get those. Those are, uh, some of the cheaper options. Um, but if you don't mind staying in the crop sensor, uh, family, you can probably go ahead and get the 7D Mark II, which is a great, great camera. Um, it's probably going to be the same price as probably like a 6D, Canon 6D, but it's a really great camera. A lot of great reviews on that. So, uh, check out those. I'm going to put a list of, of those as well on the show notes so you can check those out and just cycle through and see if you, uh, you know, if, if any one of those meets your needs. So uh, head on over to the show notes for those. And let's go to question three. And I hope I don't get this name wrong, but it's Jess Melanie's or Melness. I hate names. I suck at names. Um, Melness. I'm just going to say Melanie's. How about that? Melanie's. Jess Mel. Sorry, I butchered your, your name. Um, but it says, uh, I'm wanting to get into street photography, but don't know where to start. Tips, please help. Um, let's see, street photography should be like one of the easiest ones to start. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like landscape photography. You just go out there and shoot. Uh, I don't really have any like, great tips for that, but, um, I can probably go with, you know, if, if you're worried about getting up in people's faces with your, with your camera, I mean, just put a long lens on there if you can and, uh, and, and shoot that way. And, you know, don't obviously don't, don't intrude on people's privacy and their personal space. Um, but it's kind of, I feel, I feel street photography is one of those ones where you kind of camp out, walk around, you know, walk around a certain area for a while and see if stuff happens and, and that sort of thing, or try to capture a mood. Um, but one tip that I do, I do have in regards to, uh, shooting, especially in the summer months where it's really hot is, uh, to uh, find a parking garage in one of the cities uh, that you're going to be like, I, I, since I live near downtown Greensboro, North Carolina, um, there's probably six parking garages that I can choose from. There's probably not that many, but it seems like there's a lot to choose from. And, uh, so for example, I was trying to do, trying to do a time-lapse video, of some of the some of the streets and just have people walking fast and you know cars driving by and everything but i wanted to get a higher elevation so i was like why not go in a parking garage so you know usually around saturday morning or sunday morning you know the parking garages are just bare and it's free on the weekends at least here it is so it's free on the weekend so i just drove up to probably like the third or fourth level uh, i didn't go to the highest level because it's it's not covered and that's one reason why i'm saying in the summer months it's easy because um, it's, it's easy and recommended for that is because you're, you're still out there and you're still able to look out, you know, in, in the, in the parking garage area, look over the city, but you're, you're covered. So you don't have to worry about the sun being down on you. So that's one, uh, one tip that you could do if you wanted to, you know, try to get an overall view of the city, but still not have to uh, deal with the heat and stuff like that. Um, so basically just, yeah, just street photography. I mean, it's just basically just trying to, to, to catch a mood, catch a scene, you know, uh, it can, it could really be anything. Um, post-processing is probably where it's going to make you, your, your big impact. Um, you've probably seen that a lot of black and white photos are, are associated with street photography and, and, uh, you know, it just gives that cool mood to it. But yeah, just basically just get out there and shoot. And, 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 you know, if you want to start out with the, the parking garage kind of tip, you can start out that way and then, and then move on. So thank you, Jess, for the uh, question. And let's go to the next question. And that is from Sam T and that's Sam T period. So you didn't put your last name. So that's all I had was just Sam T. Um, and it says, uh, how do you make Photoshop actions and why do you need to use them? Well, Sam, uh, when it comes to Photoshop actions, it's, it's really easy to make. It's basically just opening, uh, the action window in Photoshop and clicking the record button. It's the small round button there. And you basically make all the edits that you would make to a, uh, a, an image. So any, uh, contrast adjustments, exposure adjustments, that sort of thing. And then you stop the, uh, the action and, uh, save it. And there you go. You have your own Photoshop action. And what it basically does is next, you know, every time you open up an image and hit play, 
uh, next to in in that uh, action window, you hit play. It's going to apply those same effects exactly the way you did it. So um, that's how you make them. It's really easy. Uh, I actually have a video on my uh, Picture Monk site, and if you go to I'm trying to pull it up here, if you go to PictureMonk.com/freebie, it's one of the uh, free Friday freebies that I had where I actually gave you a downloadable action. Um, so uh, head on over there and you can check that out. Um, but why would you use them? That is, um, it's kind of subjective, really. Uh, a lot of people don't use Photoshop actions because they want to touch individual edits of their photo. Um, but I kind of use them like I would presets in Lightroom, and it's where I would do basic adjustments. So I know if there's going to be one thing that I do to every photo, might as well make an action for it and I have to touch it each time and just run that action. It's done. So it's more of a, you know, if you're a stickler for a workflow, then you know, actions are good to to use for that. So uh, just kind of think of them like presets. If you use like a lot of presets in Lightroom, you're probably going to, you know, like your actions and, and build up your own Photoshop actions. So let's go to the next question. And that is uh, from Donnie Patton. So his question is his or her, I, I would assume it's him. Uh, I'm going to shoot a wedding for a friend in April. And I'm not sure what to charge. Um, kind of wasn't a question, but <laughs> but I get what you're saying. Um, so uh, I haven't done many weddings. I've only done two weddings, and both of those were smaller smaller weddings. Nothing like you would you would expect to see from uh, you know. Basically, what I'm trying to say is nobody they didn't pay a whole lot of money. Like the first one I ever shot was really um, kind of like a backyard wedding, and it was a uh, uh, it was a nice backyard. It was uh, the 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 bride's, it was her uncle's house and it was on the lake and stuff like that. Um, but it wasn't that, that big of a wedding. So I basically only charged them for me going out there. I did have to drive about 45 minutes for me going out there. It was, uh, I only charged them 250 bucks and I, I didn't mind it cause it was my first wedding. I knew that I wasn't experienced, so I knew I wasn't going to charge them a lot. And thankfully, I got the photos that they needed and that they, you know, that they wanted. So, um, just make sure you get the photos that they that they need. Uh, the second wedding I shot was for a friend of my dad's and a coworker that I used to work with, and um, they were kind of an older couple, so they didn't have a lot of things that a normal wedding would. Um, they didn't have like the first dance and the the father, father, bride dance and all that kind of stuff. They didn't have any of that stuff. It was basically just the wedding. Um, and then the, uh, reception with, the uh, with eating and, and basically that's it. And I just got a couple cap uh, candid photos of, of the scene. So, um, and I think I charged them 500 for that one. And so I, I gave them as much photos as I could. Um, and that's about it. So I haven't really done any high-end weddings, and and I don't want to do any high-end weddings because I know I'm not really prepared for that. Uh, number one, I only have one camera body as I sold my other camera body, so I, I only have one camera, and I really do want two, uh, two different bodies so I can keep switching out, um, you know, if I want to go telephoto, wide angle, that sort of thing. So I know I'm not equipped for that, even though I do have a camera that can really handle weddings now. Um, you know, I'm just not ready for that. So I, I would just kind of, you know, just... Just look at it the way they're, that they're seeing. If, if it's going to be a smaller wedding, then don't charge them a lot because if it's your first wedding, then, you know, you definitely don't want to charge them a lot and you don't want to, you know, kind of rip them off if you don't give them what they want. And that's kind of hard to say, but, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to take the money from them, even though you're, they're their friends. Um, you know, if, if, if you say, Hey, I, I don't want to take the, you know, I don't want to be paid for the image or for the, for the taking the photos, you know, maybe use the money to, um, to hire another photographer that's more equipped, uh, but I'll I'll be there with my camera and I'll get some photos. If you're if you're if you're not worried or if you're too worried about uh, getting the actual photos um, and you and you don't want to you know you're kind of nervous about it, maybe you go that route. So um, check that out. Uh, you know if you if you want to try that. So um, when you do shoot the wedding though, Donnie, email me back and let me know how it went and see uh, and let me know what you what you chose to do. So the next question is. Um, See, I kind of wrote this down. I can't read my own handwriting. It's, I think it's Elaine Meyer. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. <laughs> Elaine Meyer. Uh, it's, uh, let's see, my, the photography group I belong to says to never use HDR or never never just use HDR. Um, but I like it. What are your thoughts? Uh, and that's the photography uh, HDR question that I kept in there. 
Um, I don't really think that your photography group should tell you what to use or what not to use. So that's my first thought on it right away. Uh, you know, you got to create your own style. You got to create your own, your own, uh, you know, niche. So, um, you know, use HDR if you want to don't care. I don't care what they say. Use HDR if you want to, uh, you know, some people are going to like it. Some people are not. It's fine. It's your photos. If you like it, do it. So, um, that's my first thought, but, uh, I, I, I can kind of guess, you know, where they're coming from. They, they don't like the, uh, over completely overdone HDR images, which I don't, I don't prefer either, but I don't, you know, go around saying, no, don't, don't, don't use that. Um, so it's kind of that way. Just, just do your own thing. Um, you know, if, if it's, if the photography group is, is dictating what, you know, not, well, not dictating, but putting out there that, Hey, don't, don't use this then, you know, maybe not belong to that photography group. Um, cause really I would say I would, I would never been to a photography group and I probably, I do want to go. Um, but I've never been to one, but I, I don't think that they should, uh, kind of handle themselves that way. So, um, thank you, Elaine, for the question. And let's go to the next question. And that one is, um, I see photographers on Instagram posting photos not taken with an iPhone. Do you know how to do that? Uh, yeah, I think there's a service, and I don't remember the service's name, but it's a paid service to where you have to uh, to upload that to that service, and they'll they'll post it on your behalf on Instagram. Uh, I I don't really want to pay for another service because there's a whole bunch of monthly stuff that I pay for, um, when it comes to photography. So I don't really want to pay for another service, especially just to, to do that. Uh, but I do have a workaround for you and it has to do with, uh, downloading the Dropbox app. And basically what you do is whether you have a PC or a Mac, um, you would go to Dropbox, create a free account on Dropbox. And what it'll do is it'll put a folder on your computer to where that folder automatically syncs real time with uh, with Dropbox. So, like I, on my Dropbox account, I have a uh, Instagram folder, and when I want to put something on Instagram taken with a DSLR, I will pop that image into that folder, and then that folder will sync on my iPhone to the Dropbox app on my iPhone. And then, so uh, you know, I'll, I'll just throw a whole bunch of them in there at one time, and then I'll go on my phone and I open up the Dropbox app. And uh, I'll pick the one that I want to put on Instagram. I'll download it to my phone and then upload it through Instagram. And that's the that's the easiest free way that I've seen to do it. Uh, if, if there is another way that anybody else knows listening to the podcast here, there is a, another easier way. Um, be sure to, uh, to email me about that or hit me up on Twitter and let me know about that too because I would be interested. But that's the best one I've seen and it's it's kind of an easy workflow. Uh, I don't have to keep going to weird services and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, Orlando, that, that's your name. I didn't ever say your name. Oh, no, that's not you. Yeah, that's you. Okay, Orlando. <laughs> Orlando Tate. Um, that's what I got for you. Uh, if you, uh, like I said, if you, if you find out another way by chance, let me know. So thank you, Orlando, for the, uh, the question. All right, the next question, and this is almost it, is um, do you have any filters you would recommend? Um, I assume you're talking about, uh, camera filters that you would put on the front of your camera, not like, not like filters like Instagram filters or, or stuff like that. So I'm going to go with that. And you, and this is from Henry Williamson. So, uh, would I recommend any filters? Yeah, I, uh, I probably would recommend a circular polarizer filter. Definitely get one of those. Uh, a neutral density filter if you can get multiple of those and uh, I, I think I have a couple two stop or three stop fil- neutral density filters and um, I think that's all that I have I do have a UV filter but that just it was just because it came with the camera I don't ever use it uh, I don't recommend using a UV, a UV filter a lot of people just use it as a uh, as some protective thing so like if you camp if you drop your camera it's not going to bust the lens you know, most likely bust that filter and you can just screw it off and your lens is good to go. Um, but normally I, 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 I don't, I don't have that problem. I, and, and I, uh, I think I did break a lens. I broke a whole lens one time, but that would, a filter wouldn't save that. So, uh, yeah, I would get a circular polarizer and that's basically, 
you know, it has that same effect of polarizing sunglasses where it darkens the, you know, the glare off of, uh, off, uh, off of objects. So, you know, the sky will darken a little bit. Uh, as you rotate it around and a neutral density filter is basically just a filter that darkens the image overall and uh, that's that's good to be used for you know high high lighting situations so you know if it's uh, it's really bright outside and you want to get slow motion um, blurry effects then you screw on a bunch of neutral density filters and it it decreases your shutter shutter speed so you can get that low. So that's uh that's the only ones that I would really recommend. That's the only ones that I have used in the past. Uh, as far as a brand, I don't really have a brand. I guess Hoya. That's the uh, that's probably one of the well known ones. And I believe my circular polarizing filter is a Hoya. So um, just make sure you find the right thread for your uh, for your camera or for your lens. Um, just look on the front of your lens for a uh, circle circle with a line through it um that and then there's going to be a number beside it in millimeters and that's the uh that's the number you want to look for when you're buying a lens filter so thank you henry for the question all right and the last question is let's see this is a kind of a longer one uh i just bought my canon t5i hey there we go um uh, let's see who who asked that question we got stacy thompson recommended a dslr and i recommended the t5i so there you go. Um, and this person is Shirley King. King. There we go. Yeah. Shirley King. Uh, I just bought my Canon T5i and want to know what lens to get. I am a super beginner. <laughs> and she put that in quotes. Uh, I am a super beginner and I don't know what all the F numbers mean. What would you recommend? Um, let's see. Well, I'm hoping your camera, your T5i came with the kit lens. Um, if, if you just bought the body only, then, um, probably I would recommend, Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, probably a 24 to 70, probably Sigma lens or a Tamron, probably Tamron. You're probably going to find 24 to 70 2.8, but those are going to be more expensive. So I would try to get something other than that. Um, and basically when, when, when you say the F numbers, I'm assuming you mean the aperture, um, the F numbers or the aperture of a lens is how, how, uh, how big the opening of the lens can get. So if it's, if it says F4, then your aperture will be F4. That's the lowest it can go. Uh, if you get like a, a nifty 50, which is the Canon or they have a young new new or whatever, uh, 50 millimeter, but the Canon 50 millimeter 1.8 um, that F number that you said, uh, is the 1.8. So it can go all the way down to 1.8, which means you're going to get a, uh, a super, a super blurry background. And that's kind of, you know, when you take portraits and stuff, that's usually what you want. Um, but, uh, you know, if you get an F4, the lowest it can go is F4. So it's not, the background won't be as blurry unless you zoom in and, and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, uh, if you got a kit lens, I would stick with the kit lens just for now. If you're a super beginner, uh, I would stick with the kit lens just for now and, and learn your camera, uh, learn composition, uh, maybe get some editing going on, that sort of thing. I wouldn't worry about lenses whatsoever. Um, the only lens that I would, if you do have your kit lens, the only lens I would probably recommend is the, the Canon 50 1.8 just so that you can experiment with the, the 1.8 and it's a, uh, it's a pretty cheap uh, lens. I think it's about a hundred bucks. So you're not really out a whole lot of money and it's just a, a great little lens. I mean, even with my Canon 6D that I have, I still use my Canon 50, uh, 50 millimeter to uh, record my videos and stuff. So it's a really great lens. It's really sharp and uh, even being plastic, it's really well made. So, um, yeah, if if you didn't have it uh, again, I would get the uh, Tamron or Sigma seventy. Or I'm sorry, twenty four to seventy, and just kind of stick with that because it's kind of like an all purpose, um, all purpose range. It's not going to be as wide angle as a as an eighteen millimeter would be, but you know you'll you'll do. So that's what I would recommend. So thank you, Shirley for uh, Shirley King for the question. All right, guys, that was basically it. I just wanted to run through a bunch of questions that I had and. Uh, Please, please, please keep sending questions in. That's actually really cool to get questions. Uh, I think I almost skipped a bunch of these uh, when I was looking through my inbox, and um, they came in a different folder than I thought. So I have a whole bunch of questions. Uh, or I have a whole bunch of questions that I answered, so I want to answer more. So send them over. You can email me at picturemonk 
at gmail.com or just go to picturemonk.com and uh, go to the contact form and you can email email me that way. So that's how I got all these questions was from the contact form. So thank you very much. Um, but yeah, thank you guys very much. Uh, coming up next week on the Picture Monk site is, um, let's see, we have two videos, I believe, and a Friday freebie. And uh, I do apologize for not putting up a whole bunch of stuff, especially on my YouTube page, because uh, for my nine to five job, it's been really hectic th- around this time of year, just because there's a lot of work going on. Um, but after the, let's see, when is it? After the 27th of March, uh, it's probably going to be open season. So I'll, I'll be able to, <laughs> I'll be able to make a bunch of content and crank it out and, uh, get you guys some photography stuff. So thanks again for listening. I really appreciate you guys head on over to picturemonk.com and you can see a bunch of stuff. Again, email me questions at picturemonk at gmail.com. And that's about it. I appreciate you guys listening and I will catch you guys in the next podcast. 